Okay, tutorial about geometry nodes. Let's go. Okay, let's start simple. We're going to add some grass, which I already did. Uh -huh. Add a little plane, just like that. Maybe subdivide it a few times, like that. And we'll pick. Well, basically, we, we can pick anything. Let's let's grab a few of these. Say we want a mix of this, these types of grass. And let's press M to move it to a new collection. Grass green. Uh, and we'll move these two there as well. Now we will delete the rest and move this grass out of sight. There you go. We're going to start off with a little particle simulation, but not with a particle simulation with geometry node. So we're going to start off in general, just very simple to get you to get you guys to know, to understand how this stuff works. Okay, let's start with a point distribute node. If I plug this in here. You'll see nothing happens. Oh wait, that's because <laughs> that's because I grabbed the wrong thing. And one of these has geometry nodes now. Okay, select the plane and go to the geometry nodes tab and add ge geometry node. Let's see. Okay, we're going to add a point distribute node. Where is it? There it is. And you'll see that this happens. Uh, I'm sure this looks uh, weird, but you can add in your. I'm sure you want to keep your plane. So what you'll do is add a join geometry node. You can plug as many things in here as you want, which is pretty cool. And there you go. As you can see, this geometry thingy is basically the plane, which we just created. This thingy randomly distributes vertices or points or thingies like that. Now what you want to do here is grab a point instance. And because we already made a little collection here, we can just go to collection and we will select grass green and disable this whole collection thing and select our grass green again. Oh, and if your grass does this, just uh, select your plants, your grass and uh, press Ctrl A and then apply rotation. Now, as you can see, uh, this grass is a little bit too big. We don't want that too big. Uh, what you can do about that is add a attribute math or add a attribute randomize. So if we'll take randomize and why this randomize or math is basically this is going to, you're going to input a little thing here that says we're going to make the grass bigger or smaller. So let's take a multiply. Uh, we'll take this attribute and we'll insert scale and then we'll change this to a float and then this to a scale again. Oh no, my bad, I did that wrong. Uh, you need to place this math node in front of the point instant node. So we'll disconnect this by pressing Ctrl and then left mouse click, you'll create a little knife that will cut the wires and slide that in there and then slide that in there. Okay, as you can see, the grass might be a little bit too big and we don't want that. So let's add a little attribute uh, or just type in randomize. There we go. And nothing happens. So what we want to do is fill in something here that applies to the grass. So let's see. Well, we'll take skill, for example. Now the skill of the grass is going to be very random. And you can, of course, just select this grass, uh, go select this individual cursor thingy and skill only select the grass, not the whole plane. And skill everything like this. In this case, it doesn't really work, but we want to keep that in here for convenience. So let's set this a bit lower. So that looks good about this size. And let's set this a bit higher. Great, now we have grass. Now why is this better than a normal particle system where you can where you go hair and then eventually you'll end up with the same result like this? Because you can customize this way more. And you'll see that when we get a bit further into the tutorial. So let's add a bit more grass by increasing this density, just like that. And as you can see, it, it's, it's all pointing to one direction. So you can't really see anything like this. It's, it's, it's all facing one way, one direction, <laughs> which we don't want either. So let's add another attribute to randomize. And this time we're going to add a rotation. But instead of scale, we're going to put this to rotation and set this float to a vector. Now we're just going to set this all to zero to reset that. And let's see what rotates our grass in the right way. I think this looks about good. There we go. You can pull this up as high as you may. I think right that looks about good. So as you can see, it looks very good and from all sides. All right, let's find a nice grass texture. 
Let's see, this one right here looks pretty good to me. So we'll take that there, add this there, plug that in there, and make this... Oh, why is it like that? Let's see, let's make this grass the right color. Just like that, add it onto that, that. Then we'll add a normal map, which will add a curve, not that curve, this curve. Let's modify this grass a bit, and we will move this grass to another collection because the dark grass doesn't look as amazing as I thought it would. So let's name this dark grass. And as you can see, all the dark grass is removed from this. Now one, hand one handy little thing is that you can still, let's maybe scale this up a tad, like that. And I've decreased the specular a bit. So it pretty much is going to look the same at all angles. If you do that, just like that. Maybe you want to add a little U and saturation node to de desaturate it a bit or add a little bit of saturation anyway. What you can do now is maybe add a little sample texture. And I'm not sure where you should add it, but I think it's safest to add a little sample texture right there. And we'll name the result. So basically this result is going to be a little map. Uh, before we do that, we're going to add a little sample texture, which we're going to set the clouds. And the result is going to be, let's say, Haiti or something simple like he. Just make sure it's not already in here. So you created your own little texture. Now, if I'm right, we can add a little attribute math node right there. Make a scale. B will turn into a float and the result will be scale as well. Now, as you can see, that will scale up the grass normally. So if you want that, uh, there it is. But we can also add another one of these and set this one to attribute. And then we're going to set this one to he. And set this as a multiply. I realized it would look like this now. So you're going to have to add a little mapping, which is going to be our UV map. And our UV map looks like this. And it covers the whole square, which is good. Now, as you can see, the grass height is a little bit very random. It has some spots. As you can see, some spots where it's higher and some spots where it's lower grass. Now, if we don't want this grass to be like actually tiny or just non-existent, you can add a little color ramp node, which you'll change into he, and then again, he. So basically what we're doing here is we're taking this attribute that we made here, the he, and uh, we are resulting it into the he. And basically we can control our grass height now, which again is what's happening here. We are basically saying the dark values on here are making, is making the small, is the, is making the grass smaller. And the white values on here is making the grass taller. Now, if we don't want, as I said, if we don't want the grass to be like, non-existent, we want to increase this value to a little bit above zero. And if we want to like make that a certain value like this and only make a few, a few spots have like a uh, high grass, or you can often, you can just increase the skill like this. And then only this spot will have a higher grass than that. Or you can just do that. If you wanted to do this, for example, with a little particle system, you would have to create another particle system and copy the settings and stuff. But you don't have to do that here. So let's make this grass a bit higher by increasing the value. There you go. Beautiful grass, grass patch. But I don't really want that. So we'll take this down a bit, do this. Awesome. Okay, let me explain a little what I did here. I added a point distribute, which scatters around points, which give information to where certain things have to be, in this case, the grass. And this basically makes for the grass's density or how, mu how much, how many of the grass, or how much of the grass there is. We added a sample texture, which you can see in here. It's a little mask, which we basically used to scale the grass on different parts, which made grass, patch, grass patches and, and stuff like that. We used the UV map for that to show this sample texture where to go, basically. You don't have to worry about that. It's basically just a UV map 
all the time when you use the sample texture you just fill in UV map. The result we turned into he, which we filled in here, which basically we multiplied the scale by, so any dark patches or any dark spots on here are going to be smaller, smaller grass thing thingies, which is the scale, or the grass is going to be scaled smaller because of the, we multiplied by black and black means small, white means tall. <laughs> In this case, anyway. We can modify that text here by using this color ramp right here. We can randomize that scale using this node right here. So as you can see, scale, we fill, fill that in here. This, again, this is the scale of the grass. And we put in a minimum amount of scale that the grass could be. If you put this to zero, some grass will be like non-existent because the grass will not be visible. Like it's actually not, it's not there. <laughs> so let's put this back at 0.05. Increasing this will increase the max height. Of the of the grass, this attribute math node scales the grass in it in a whole as a whole, just like that. We just add to the scale, as it may. We already covered this one. That's the he the he he a sports, and basically, and with the attribute randomize, we turned around the grass like that. Awesome! And you can randomize that even more by just clicking this seed. Same goes for the scale. Click the seed. Some will be taller. Some grass will be smaller and again you can also do this with other axes just like that but i mean i would not use that for grass and the point instance tells us what the points of the point distribute are going to be in this case our grass you can also just select one single grassy grass just like that uh which you would have to apply this the rotation with again to make it stand up right <laughs> but and we want the whole collection for some more randomization and the joint geometry no makes us able to well show the plane under it so we can still have both the grass as you can see this is the grass you can also have it without the plane but we would rather keep the plane just like that to keep the whole feel that was a little summer summarization summer some I, I summed it up <laughs> anyway what we can do now is add even more all right before we begin with the next thing uh for me this is all very exper experimental as well in between the recordings i'm testing a lot of things which i probably which i will probably edit out uh and i actually don't f really feel like i'm ready to make this tutorial yet but i guess y'all really want one uh especially since y'all uh, saw this little example where the peely kind of dissolves into a cube into cubes like uh like like a kind of death effects uh, they that happens in the trailers Bruh. as you can see it, it comes back why do you come back it doesn't work when i like extrude this bit uh it goes away for a while but then it just does the same thing so um anyway let's make a little building generator and with a building generator i mean this little piece of crap where you can make something higher make something with with here with with there with with uh depth here i'm not sure why the floors aren't working right now <laughs> but anyway uh we're not going to make this because that's a little bit too complicated right now but we are going to make this and as you can see this little thingy awesome it has random randomized floors randomized walls and it's all randomized and you can just oh beautiful and you can copy these all around your scene and then set the seed to something different and then set this seed to something different and then it looks like you spent a lot of time on it but you did really didn't in fact okay so how do we make that let's grab a regular floor right this and we'll use this as a base base i don't think uh you, you don't really have to grab this floor in particular uh because this floor is not going to be visible but what you are going to need is all these builds and make sure these builds are all in a separate uh separate collection so in this collection i made right here i have walls which are basically all of these as you can see and these are all different types of wall and you have to have a separate floor collection in which you put all your floors so after you've made those collections we are going to add some of it 
into our building generator. So you start off with our little floor. Well, it's not too little, actually. Okay, we're gonna add a line node. And and let's uh, delete this right now. And as you can see, if we add it, our little instance, point instance, I'm gonna stop saying little, my bad, sorry. <laughs> And set this to the collection and we will take for our collection the floor and we'll plug that in there. Oh, there it is. <laughs> uh, I was worried for a bit. Okay, so th this deselect this whole collection thingy. You'll see that uh, all these floors are stacked on top of each other. Stacked on top of each other. So, and you can randomize that by pressing this button. Uh, let's see. Those are a little bit too close to each other by the way so we don't want that and we don't have walls yet so what we're going to do is duplicate this just like that at a another point instance uh, grab our geometry pull that in there and for this collection we're going to select our walls which we're going to plug in there and now we can carefully bring this up just like that and as you can see every time you add a count or disable or just subtract account it will work properly like that and as you can see the walls are going to be different every time you press a seed now we can add uh we can pull this into there and as you can see it appears here now you can press this and it will activate this count thingy and we can pull that in there why you may think because let's see we're going to add a join geometry and pull this in there and look the floor it is right there awesome now we can use this for as or this this wall as a reference to scale this up and would you look at that it's, it's exactly that number it's exactly that okay so what we're going to do is add a little combine xyz set this to point or uh, 3.18 plug that in there Plug that in there and now if we increase this there you go awesome it has floors woohoo okay I'm not sure why it prefers <laughs> these floors so much uh, but I guess we'll have to leave with it oh wait there we go now if we want to go simple we can just go ahead and add a little transform node there you go and plug this into there basically what happens now is that there's two duplicates of this side of the wall and you'll notice that when I drag this out there you go we can set this to be right there except that you have a very the same wall right here and I think that's what I did here here oh no wait wait wait, wait. so basically what we do is not place the transform right there we're going to place it right there and then then add a join geometry then plug that in there. And as you can see, it's now randomized. So we will drag that out to be put right there. Awesome. Now what we'll do is we'll take this and drag that down. Uh, drag this out a little bit more. And we are going to add another line, which will duplicate by pressing Control Shift D to keep all of our lines right here. And we're going to add another one of these transform nodes, except that we're going to set this to zero for now. And another join geometry, join geometry, and plug that in there, plug that in there, plug that into this, add that. Uh, before we do anything, we're going to, oh, we are going to add another transform in here. Let's see. And wrote this, wrote this, did like that 90 degrees and now we can go into here or let's see press the shift press shift and then left mouse button uh, then you can create one of these points drag this down there drag this down there and we can move this oh let's put that there move this to about that point and then move it backward to about that point and then move that right there and that just works doesn't it yeah and now you have a random tower that's that's about it <laughs> and you can even do this if you want to for some reason now that you have this you might want to, you might want to have some extra control so uh let's see we're going to add this seed 
in here and in there and in there so beautiful just like that you have a randomly generated awesome little tower and you can copy this as many times as you want just like that let's see decrease that a bit oh and we might want to add one more floor in case you do not want this upper floor to be uh, not roofed <laughs> um, you want to add to this line or to this line you want to add math one there you go and now it has a roof <coughs> There you go. Doesn't it look awesome? Wow, beautiful. Now let's go back to the grass patch and let's do some landscaping. So we'll scale this up just like that. And that means we will scale this down just like that and scale this up. No, never mind. Let's not do that. Let's just add a little vertex color. Uh, well, it's basically going to look like this. Just add a little plus. It's going to be called coal. And let's plug coal into the random density thing right there now why uh well mostly because of this reason we're going to go into vertex paint and we're going to draw a little path but on the path we don't want grass so that's basically why we plug that into here we're going to paint with black because as we as i said before black is like taller grass or black is smaller grass and totally black is non-existent grass so we'll paint that right here and you'll see the grass gradually disappears, disappears like that. And what we can do is pretty cool. Actually, we can go into shading and grab this. Oh, let's do that for now. Grab this uh, vertex color call. And as you can see, we have the mask right here. Let's paint that a little bit neater like this. Awesome. And what's useful about this is that we can plug something like sand in it. So let's make a mix shader. Mix, oh no, that's a mix RGB, mix shader. And plug that in there. Plug this in there. And plug this in there. As you can see, oh, there you go. As you can see, we made a little path where the grass isn't right now, where, or, or where it is not located. Um, so we can just keep on painting that, by the way. So. There you go. We can basically landscape like the actual Fortnite, like an actual, like it's the actual Fortnite game. Isn't that fucking awesome? Awesome? Or just yeah. now? I think this grass around the path is a little bit too, let's say, tall. We are going to, if you if you don't want that, we're going to add a little group, and this group is going to do, do determine how small or tall or big the grass is going to be. Now before we do that, I do want this path to be a bit more straight. So we'll decrease this a little bit, just like that. Be gone, path. Now that we have our smooth little path, we can go into, or not into, we are going to go add another one of these nodes. Oh wait, <laughs> I don't know why that's there. Okay, add another math attribute. And this time we're going to set it to multiply again. Put this to scale, put this to group, because that's the group we just made, and put this to scale again. And if we go into white paint now, you can see everything is blue. And if you make everything, ooh, what the fuck? Oh, uh, I did it, I did not oopsie. <laughs> the scale has to be behind the end room attribute randomize. Okay, right there. So, I'm still not really sure why that is, why you have to put the scale behind this attribute attribute at, at randomize thingy uh, but I'll work with it so basically we'll have to color this all or just is, can we invert it I think we can just wait and then invert or not well in any case we're just going to paint this area where the path is or we're just gonna leave the area where the path is blue and we're gonna paint this area red, just like this. And you might wanna go a little bit over the path. And if we go into object mode, you'll see that the grass is smaller around the path because the weight paint makes this little gradient right here that tells that the blue is basically the black and the red is basically the white, which means at the blue, it's going to be smaller and at the white, it's going to be taller, which makes for this little beautiful beautiful path with smaller grass on the sides 
Yeah. Now let's change our texture a bit, just like this. That looks better. Yeah, I think we'll call it here. Um, in case you do want to look at this uh, little, in case you do want to look at this little whatever respawn thingy it is, or despawn, uh, where, is, where is it? I don't know where it is. There it is. Uh, these are the notes for it. So basically, what you have to do here is uh, <laughs> copy these nodes and make sure there is a uh, there's a there's a call and a call to or no the call to you can name this whatever you want uh, but the I'll, I'll, I left it at call to because I am a little stupid anyway and you want to have this cube right here which is in in the nodes is this cube beautiful and you want this cube <laughs> You want this cube to have these nodes. Yeah, got it. So for anyone who wants to copy that. And I didn't use I IX's, IX prods his uh, or nine prods his method, uh, which is which does uh, make make the character completely disappear after the thing has gone by. Uh, because I, I, I really wanted this to be like controllable from any angle or from any kind of way if we add an icosphere for example and we set this cube or i mean uh let's see where is it oh no wait wait wait, wait. before that uh, this cube isn't this cube right here this cube is <laughs> this cube so uh that cube is this cube beautiful the point instance one uh as you can see if i if, if i delete that uh you'll see nothing happens this is that cube but uh, if I change this cube into this sphere, as you can see, this sphere now controls that. And if we put this sphere into bounds, you can see that I, if I move this sphere from any direction, <coughs> I can make the character explode from any from weird angles, which you can't really do with IX Prods' method. And I'm sure there's a way to make this work, but I have I just haven't figured it out yet. Look at that. Doesn't that look very good? Yes. Okay. So again, here's the notes. Do with it whatever you want. And I guess that's been the end of this video. And I really want to thank you for watching. Uh, I'm sorry. <clears throat> I'm sorry. It's probably not that good of a tutorial. Because I'm not that good at geometry notes. Yeah. <laughs> sorry. That was a really loud gape. Yawn, what the fuck, gape? <laughs>